is Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be doing my March reading wrap-up talking about all the books that I read in the month of March so this month I read a total of seven books, some poetry, some novels, and yeah, I'm super excited to talk about them with you guys today. Next up here, I read Orange Future by Ichigo Takano. This is a manga series. It does have a big trigger warning for suicide, and if you don't know, Orange is a manga series. There's You, you can buy the two big bind-ups, and that's the end. And then they came out with this, which is just a little one about what happens after, and it was just so special and I missed this so much and it manages to talk about so like serious subject matter but throw in some like cute parts and some like comic relief a little bit. I just love the story and the characters so like I was super happy to be back with all of them. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Here I read one that I tabbed the hell out of and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I tabbed it so much, it's color-coded, the whole book is highlighted. Yeah, so we had to read this for my English class. If you don't know, Frankenstein is about a man named Victor Frankenstein who creates a monster and has to live with the consequences. And there's so much more to the plot of Frankenstein than that, but I'm sure you have an idea of what this story is about because it is such a classic. I loved this so much and I loved being able to study it in class. I love the symbolism. I loved reading it. I read like ahead of our reading schedule because I was so excited to read it. I loved the dark writing. Um, I know her writing is probably not for everybody, but I loved like the dark tone that this book had. She does use like the same words over and over again. Like the word anime got me so annoyed because it's used so often, but that's not the point. <laughs> but it's so well written, but she does like reuse the same words over and over again, which is something that I noticed. But it was so dark and symbolic and tragic and it was just, ugh. I loved it so much. I was so happy with it. I didn't think I would love it as much as I did. So I ended up giving this a solid 4.5 out of 5. Next up here, I read Faithful by Alice Hoffman. I actually listened to the audiobook of this one. This is about a girl named Shelby whose best friend is in a serious accident and she is left to deal with the guilt and the consequences and it's about her life from when this accident happens to like adulthood and all the things that come with that and her in a dark place and it's a very like serious book and it was for how short it was it really did pack a punch like the, there was so many things that this book had like it's there was dogs there was bookstores like there was dudes there was food there was like it was just a really interesting book and i'm really glad i ended up reading it this month it's just a really like nice coming of age story and overall i was pretty happy with it the audiobook was like a good call for me so if you see this around check it out next up here we have a release that everyone is talking about and everyone is reading but that is restore me by tanara mafi this is the fourth book in the shatter me series so book one shatter me is about this girl named juliet whose touch is lethal and She's taken by the reestablishment and forced into isolation and then is used as like a weapon and it's about her in that situation. So this is the fourth installment. The first three books came out a while ago. I read them a long time ago. I loved them when I read them. And then this came out. I like screamed when I saw it in the bookstore, especially because they had it out early. Um, but overall, I did enjoy this one. It's not my favorite. I'm still happy to be back, but part of me is like, maybe I would have been fine with the three books that there were, which is kind of an unpopular opinion. <laughs> the characters and stuff, Warner was obviously Warner, I love him, and Kenji was everything in this book. Juliet pissed me off so bad towards the end of this. Like, I wanted to just like throw the book across the room. I was like, honey, stop. The ending was also a big turn. Overall, I did like it. It's just not my favorite, but I gave it a solid 3.5 out of 5. I'm definitely going to be continuing, and I would suggest picking this up if you did, if you do like the first three books. Next up here, I read Reflected in You, and this is by, I didn't write the author's name down, but it's on the screen. So this book is an adult smut romance novel. It's the second in the Crossfire series, which book one is basically just about these two people. They meet through a business 
they work together. He's the boss, of course, because <laughs> that's the way these stories go, apparently. Impressed by book one, because it was like 50 shades, but done like 20 times better, but like not good, because like, I don't know how to explain it. I was impressed with book one because I could not put this thing down for the life of me. Book two pissed me off so bad. Like, I'm so done with this series. I it was quick. I will give it that, but it's 50 shades, but this one was done worse. <laughs> and it was just too dramatic for me. Too much drama. It was just annoying. That's all I have to say. It just irritated me. The characters irritated me. The plot got on my nerves. It just wasn't great. So I ended up giving this one two stars. Next up, I have The Wicked Deep and this is by Shay Earnshaw. I don't think I pronounced that right. Sorry. This book is so interesting and was, as soon as I heard about it, I was super excited about it. Basically, it's a YA fantasy-esque kind of book. It takes place in our modern world, but it takes place in 1822, so it does have that historical element, I guess. It takes place in Origin, and it's about the Swan Sisters, so it's about the witch trials and the three, these three girls that were drowned in this town, and every year they come back to take another person, and the town has to live with this. It's a small town. It's one of those mysterious kind of books. It's very interesting and we follow like different perspectives and it was really nice. I did like, I, was, I, I thought it was really well done. I had like mixed feelings about the writing. At times I was like, yes. And then at times I was like, oh, okay, like it's fine. <laughs> Such a cool concept. And like, I loved the love interest and I loved like so many things about this, but also at the same time, it was really predictable. I figured it out. One part I didn't figure out, but then the other thing that happens, I did figure out. But overall, I think it does deserve the hype it's getting. I don't think it's like a five star read for me, but it was like a solid 3.75 for me. And if this does sound intriguing to you, definitely pick it up. It's also beautiful. Like, look. Yes. Last but not least, we have She Felt Like Nothing by R.H. Sin. I sent this by Andrews McMeal Publishing in exchange for an honest review. They sent me an early copy, so thank you so much to them. So this book actually comes out in April, so this month, and it's a poetry collection. I'm sure you guys have heard of R.H. Sin before, and I talk about it all the time. I love his work. For me, this one was good, but it wasn't as up to par with his other ones. I think it does have a different vibe than his other collections, and his smaller ones always lack for me. I don't know why. Like this one and Elegidonic were like good, but not his best. And that's how I felt about this one. It was good, but not great. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Definitely, if you're going to start with RH Sin, I wouldn't recommend starting here. But if you are a fan of his work, give this one a try. It is still enjoyable. And I did still like a lot of the poems in here. There you guys have it. Those were the books that I read in the month of March. Let me know your thoughts. No, no, no. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're new here, click the subscribe button. Follow me on my social medias if you feel like it. They're down below. And yeah, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you super soon. Bye. Here I find what it takes to be alive.